Courtesy of CagesideSeats.com, June 11th, 2017. Today in wrestling history, two years ago, Virgil Runnels Sr., best known to wrestling fans as the legendary Dusty Rhodes, dies due to complications of stomach cancer in Orlando, Florida. He was 69. Wood, do you have any thoughts on Dusty Rhodes? <clears throat> My first exposure to uh, Dusty Rhodes when he was... Um, Wearing polka dots mm. with Sweet Sapphire uh, in the WWF. Common man. The, the common man. And uh, um, at that particular t time, like, you know, he was just a regular, regular dude to me. And uh, he was beefing with the Macho Man. He was the thun of a plumber. And, uh, you know, so he was, to just to be 100% honest, he was... Um, Never nothing that special to me, but as I've grown a little, a uh, little knowledgeable, I know that was um, a lot of it. But was not um, Dusty's fault as far as his WWF run um, is concerned. But uh, you know, I, over the years, as I've gotten older, I've of uh, developed an appreciation for Dusty. And uh, another another thing was uh, him. He like Rick, he like Rick Flair were not afraid to bleed. <laughs> so I remember a lot of red and yellow. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. I have um. I do. I, I also have the uh, polka dot first exposure to Dusty. Um, but I also after my second more uh, well known wrestling run that I as being a fan. Um, I know him as the commentator on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because I, as I will always state, I was WCW for life. So I was watching it faithfully. And um, one of my favorite calls was uh, Tony um, Tony Schiavone and uh, Dusty Rhodes calling Starcade 95, where um, during the uh, New Japan WCW Best of Seven tournament, which was... Uh, Clearly an exhibition showcase for the Cruiserweights, for the Benoits, the Guerreros, mm, okay. for those guys. Uh, if you never watched Surf Dark 95? Not that I recall. I'll put it like this. Um, it's easily one of the best pre-NWO pay-per-views as far as a work rate standpoint. Um, it's probably Tony Schiavone at his best announcing. Okay. Uh Dusty, you know, was doing his wacky dusty isms and everything. <laughs> Funky like a monkey. You know, he got his back strapped and his liver quiver, baby. We're gonna take it to the pay window, baby. You know, all those he was doing all his dusty isms or whatever, but um Tony Giovanni called that whole card and um what's uh, notable about the card is the Hogan wasn't on it. So it had all the star power because uh Sting, Luger and Flair was in a triangle match to determine who was going to go on to fight Macho for the title. Okay. <clears throat> and um, Horseman beat down. Flair wins the title for like the, I think it's the 11th time at the time. And uh, they were about to head into 96. And Hogan, um, he had did all his dates. So he couldn't, he was taking the time off thinking that uh, no Hogan would tank the show uh -huh. but it actually did a better buy rate than the previous Starcade hmm. that Hogan had main evented against The Butcher aka The Booty Man aka The Clip Master aka The Man With No Name aka The Disciple aka E. Harrison Leslie aka Brother Brudai <laughs> aka <laughs> Brutus the Barber BK who thought that was a good idea <laughs> Eric Bischoff. Ooh. Yeah, that's... That anyway. Sounds like a clunker. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was uh, Stark 94 was terrible. But Stark 95 was definitely a step in the right direction um, without Hogan's uh, creative control. And uh, they put on a great show. And I watched it live. So, that's a notable thing. Hey, man, you don't have to bury Hogan just to put Dusty over. I'm not burying Hogan. It's just the fact that, you know, he had such his claws in such of all the angles 
that it was a good breath of fresh air to see a show without Hogan clogging the main event to see what the guys really could do without Hogan. I mean, at, I, honestly, and we can talk about this at a later date, but Hogan, after about 96, before the NWO thing, he wasn't even needed anymore. They didn't need it because uh, they the people were saying that the, the Flair Savage uh, storyline was... Uh, picking up house show attendance, and then you had you know the Sting Luger is it are they friends is is Luger a heel blah blah, blah. that storyline was really catching catching fire because it was very multi layered, um, and then all of a sudden you know Diesel and uh, Razor would have came in. I mean, regardless of what you say, it, it would the NWO angle with or without Hogan would have been hot. Hogan, I mean, was just like gasoline on a fire, but I mean it would have bubbled. I, I will say this though: If Hogan not would have been in the NWO, it the, the whole angle would have been dead by December. You're damn right. I mean, because he would he would have squashed everybody. <clears throat> I mean, creative control. I mean, that's really what it is. Oh. <clears throat> well, you know, it's, it's he, if anyone <laughs> earned creative control, it was Terry Bollea. I 100 percent agree. Oh, However, right. he completely abused it. You know, because he could have made money. They could have made money and they could have put Vince out of business easily, easily. They bumble fucked everything on purpose. I believe so. Ooh, can't wait to get into that yeah. one day. <laughs> we'll get into that later, later on. Um, so we're gonna go into the main topic point um, because post uh, what was it, Extreme Rules? Chill. I did a hideous uh, uh, call prediction for the main event. I said uh, either Seth. Or Finn was gonna go over, and they didn't. I didn't even watch the match honestly, but Joe went over, so it was gonna be Joe and Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire. Yeah, <laughs> what a name! <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious! And the bad part about it is they have so many um, great names that they can um, use. I mean, they could use Halloween Havoc. They could use Great American Bash. I mean, they've used it, but they could really use it. I mean, they got Starcade. Good looking. No doubt. I mean, they have so many names that they use that they pick something like Great Balls of Fire. So, to me, it it, it speaks on uh, what they're trying to uh, uh, sell to you, you know? Because, I mean, because a lot of their, uh, their uh, pay-per-view titles yeah. are really ominously themed. You know, they had Armageddon. Yeah. You know, Backlash. Hey, elimination chamber. You know, and I just, I just find like, I mean, and those names don't get me wrong. Through repetition, and 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 putting on good matches breeds familiarity. But when you hear something like Great Balls of Fire, you go, What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to? Um, what's the theme of the show? Are there going to be great balls of fire? <laughs> Is there going to be a big pyrotechno uh, pyrotechnic display the whole the whole show? Will there be inferno matches? So I don't understand why would you title a show called Great Balls of Fire? What? Um, <clears throat> I was wondering the same thing because on one hand, um, just flat out point blank, I think it's stupid. Um, it doesn't make me think of wrestling. Um, it makes me think of uh, Holocaust, <laughs> genocide, Armageddon, apocalypse, Ragnarok, end all, be all of end things, no. nexus of reality. I'm just rambling. <laughs> <laughs> that and uh, mother frickin' uh, Johnny B. Bad, because Johnny <laughs> B. Bad makes me think of Little Richard. <laughs> So, uh, 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 Mark Merrill doesn't get credit, and I want to put uh, Merrill over just because um, him and DDP put on great matches in WCW in 1995 and early 96 before he came to uh, New York. Um, he doesn't get a lot of credit, uh, I, I think, because they they pre-staged their matches because DDP is a big stickler for that. Merrill was stickler for that, but I, towards the end, I mean, those matches were four star matches, and they were openers. I mean, that that's something that people overlook when it when it comes to what made WCW better 
uh, post new generation pre attitude era as far as what made WCW get hot. It's those opening matches. I mean, those cruiserweights. Don't get me wrong. We're we're putting on great exhibitions, and for the time they were four or five star affairs. However, it, those Johnny B. Bad uh, DDP matches early on in the car also were were th were things of uh, very good craftsmanship. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're you're quite fine. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, yeah. So. Um, other than that, though, but um, outside of the name being stupid or whatever, it make it make me think of um, Mark Merrow. Um, I am excited because it looks like we're going to get the big showdown of uh, Brock Lesnar versus Samoa Joe. Yeah, um, uh, you had a few words about uh, Joe Lesnar, so. Go for it. Take it away. All right. So, yeah, I was just pondering. Um, actually had this question um, uh, right before, prior to Extreme Rules when we were, uh, when I was talking about how I think that would probably be the best best way to go or whatever, if they gave it the right bill. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, would it be good for business? So... I was thinking if it was ultimately uh, with the proper build, uh, and by proper build, I, I would prefer an extended build, like, you know, just months and months of uh, building Joe up and then cultiv cultivating that uh, culminating. Culminating. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> culminating <laughs> at WrestleMania. So it's obvious they're not going to go go that route. So... We have one month or so away from Great Balls of Fire. And um, it's like, okay, so we got a short build. Joe is not going to win. Um, so what's the next best way to make it be good in the long run for WWE? Because it can be. So the, the answer that I came up with is that Joe would have to... He would have to look good. He more than look good. He would have to be able to come out of a loss with Brock Lesnar more elevated than he was going into it. So he can't go into it, oh, uh, you know, looking like an up and comer, and then coming out of it looking like you know just uh, just another victim. So uh, Extreme Rules was last Sunday. We had the Raw. After um, Extreme Rules, mm -hmm. and um, Joe he comes out and starts cutting the promo, and I myself uh, I thought it was pretty pretty cool because um, he was talking about uh, how he doesn't fear Brock, but he's envious of Brock. He's envious of Brock that he he wants what Brock has. He wants to take what Brock has. He said he wants um, he wants. Brock's schedule. He wants to be able to come in whenever he wants to and uh, basically uh, beat people up and leave, you know what I'm saying, every few months. Um, he said he wanted, uh, oh, he said he wanted his uh, uh, ability to instill fear. And he said he wanted Paul Heyman. He said he wanted Paul Heyman uh, <coughs> to be his advocate and to, uh, to, you know, take care of his business and to run his errands and stuff. <laughs> and so then uh, after that, Paul Heyman comes out and the freaking crowd explodes. You know what I'm saying? When he says, uh, hello, th th I am Paul Heyman, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And that crowd just start going ham or whatever. So, you know, Heyman, he basically puts... Uh, he puts Joe over, basically, you know, being deferential, but at the same time saying, you know, the beast is, you know, going to, you know, it's going to take you to Suplex City, this, that, and the other. And um, Joe, predictably, he ends up beating um, beating up Paul Heyman. He puts him in the, uh, what's it called? The Coquina Clutch. Right. And, uh, you know. So anyway, long story short, Brock he's gonna be coming to to Raw next week, and so at this point I'm thinking like, all right, it's uh you know it's kind of 
kind of the WWE way, or you know, what I'm saying starting off, he got he 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 won this number one contenders match, and now he's uh, now they got to try to build him up in a month, you know, like have him rough up the manager this that and other. So I'm encouraged though because, um, like I said, I did enjoy his promo, and uh, you know, after that it was a good start. So. Anyway, they had him fighting Seth Rollins later on uh, in the main event of the show. So I'm thinking that this would be a good time to, you know, if not have him squash Seth, but at least be dominant <clears throat> in a victory or whatever. So not only do they have basically an even match or whatever, but uh, Seth Rollins, he had just, uh, you know, he, he working over Joe. He just super kick him in the head or whatever. Then they start with the Bray Wyatt um, hocus pocus light flash and um, goofiness. The, yeah, with the freaking goofiness. Co uh, Coquina lock from Samoa Joe. And then, you know what I'm saying, Seth Rollins passes out and the match is over or whatever. So I'm like, oh gosh. Um, so I don't know. I'm 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 a little nervous. Uh, can it be good for the WWE? Yes. Will it be? Will they let it be good for the WWE though? Um, I'm a little nervous. My question to you, um, since you uh, are pretty tuned in to this uh, Joe Lesnar thing, mm -hmm. is Joe's currently a heel. Correct? Correct. Okay. So I'm assuming that Brock Lesnar is the baby face? Oh. And, oh, and another thing that hyped me up, I'm so glad you asked that because I forgot to mention this part. So after, um, and this was an awesome thing I think Joe did on the spot too. So after um, he beats up Paul Heyman or whatever, he gets up, he's standing over him. The crowd starts chanting, we want Brock, we want Brock, we want Brock. Samoa Joe picks up the microphone and says, I do too. And throws down the mic and walks off. That's a baby face move. <clears throat> well, I mean, it might be a baby face move, but I, I only say that to say it's, it's looking like that's how it's shaping up to be. So, that, basically, Brock takes the match... Joe fights from underneath. Brock goes over, but Joe proves his worth in the, in the match, turns babyface. Because the only rehab that I can see going forward is squashing Miz at SummerSlam and letting him run with the IC title. That would be, that would be, uh, I mean, because he would need a belt. I mean, he, he could beat people, you know, you know, weekly. But to me, beating people weakly with no belt, beating people weakly with the icy belt, I mean it's I mean it's more of a it's more of a, a, a clincher, you know. I, I care because hey, um, Samoa Joe is over there beating people every week with the icy belt, making it mean something. Rather than Miz chicken shit in his way holding the belt. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate that. However, um, with uh, Joe doing these babyface moves, I mean, uh, regardless of what you think, if it can be, he can be a heel, but once you put the coquina clutch on Paul Heyman, did the crowd pop or did the crowd boo? They were booing. They boo. Yeah, that's what it was. And then huh. that's what they, yeah, they didn't like that. And that's that, uh, right after that's when they started chanting, We want Brock. We'll say, Yeah, let him up or whatever. I, okay, so they, so they responded correctly. Yeah, they popped, they popped, and they, like I said before, they popped when um, Paul Heyman came out. Okay, you know okay, so okay. Just, I just don't see some more Joe staying a heel after this. There's no there's no way you can work him because if you if Brock squashes him, he's a geek. And that's it. Okay, you you clearly shown that he's beneath, you know, the rest of the guys, or b at least beneath Brock. Okay, now if you any type of uh, I'm fighting, you know, I'm I'm 
I'm people are going to atta- attach to that because whether you are a cheater or not, you're still showing that you're an ass kicker. So the fans are going to pop for it, yeah. depending on where Great Balls of Fire is. If it's if it's a smart city or not, you know what I'm saying? They may react to Samoa Joe as the baby face because people are. I mean, I, I frequent Scott Keith's blog of doom, and those guys, the hive mind over there is they're tired of Brock, um, and I consider them. Uh, collectively, uh, a smart group of guys. I mean, because I'm there, <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't associate myself with dudes. <laughs> so, you know, shout out to the blogger dude. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I, you know, you put you put Joe and Lesnar in a, in a smart city, and you know, Joe's the baby face. He's doing these things, and it's, it's telling the crowd, and it's telling the, the viewing audience, this guy's your baby face. He's doing dastardly things, but he's fighting Brock. He's you know insurmountable odds. He's fighting the immovable object. Yeah, he lost, but it's gonna be a situation where Flair, Flair may stay. You know, so now you got this baby face. Now what? You got this hot baby face who lost to Brock. What do you do with him? Sorry, Miz. You got to put the IC belt on him. You got to. I mean, to me, that that, that only makes sense because if you rehab him. To make him win, mm-hmm. he's still a baby face. I mean, either way it go, coming out of coming out on the outside of fighting Brock, he's gonna be a baby face. People are going to respond to that favorably. I mean, cause Small Joe ain't no cheater. He's an ass kicker. People like ass kickers. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So he didn't kick Brock's ass, but he kicked I mean he kicked it enough to where people are gonna register with it. Yeah. Baby face. Give sorry, Miz. This run ain't gonna be the honky tonk run, you know. I, that's that's where I would go personally because if you beat guy, if you if you put some more Joe back out there on the field, he's beating guys with no meaning, not gunning for no title, you know. You, I mean, because you could just put him, you could put him down in that IC level right here. Oh, come on, man, you trip. You could put some more Joe down in that IC level, and, and it would it would make sense. So uh, that's just my that's my that's my two cents. I could see that, you know. I just, you know, I'm never in favorable of anything that involves the Miz losing. So, but and I understand that, but it's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. Miz beating Dean, Dean Ambrose was the correct call because Miz with the belt is way more of a something than Dean Ambrose with the belt. It's not so more awesome. Correct. Oh, whatever. However, um, you got to do something with Samoa Joe at SummerSlam. And the Miz is there to get beat. I mean, he's there to be beat. He's a heel. You beat heels, so why not? You know, give this guy the IC belt, let him run to WrestleMania, and and do something and get some of that work over. Get that work over and get Joe over, because Joe's better with the belt. Personally, I can see that. And I, I wouldn't. <clears throat> you know, I they would suck for a little bit, but. I'll, I wouldn't hate it, you know what I'm saying? Just suck for the mess, though. All right, let's take a pause for the cause so we re up, get rehyped, recharged. We'll come back with the ECW review. Peace.